Guten Tag everybody and welcome to CNC Kitchen. In this video I'll show you how I designed and 3D printed a replacement gear for a gearbox. Stay tuned! So my girlfriend has already been complaining since a couple of weeks that our salad spinner made strange noises. So last weekend I was also using it for cooking and realized that the internal gearbox sounded and felt totally broken. So I decided that I need to fix that and that this would actually be a perfect example for what 3D printing should and will be used in the future. Cheaply manufacturing replacement parts for whatever is broken. Just imagine how it would be. You get the CAD file of the broken part from the manufacturer and directly print it out on your own. The manufacturer does not need to have these parts in stock anymore and you don't have to pay for overpriced spares and shipping. This is still a vision for the future since, even though 3D printing is getting less expensive, I'm quite sure that it's not yet that accessible that my grandma could use it. Anyway, so I removed the uh, anti-temper plugs from the screw holes and removed the cover from the gearbox. This directly revealed what was going on, since there were plenty of gear teeth flying around. So I inspected everything and realized that only one small gear was damaged and a bearing stud was broken. If you plan to perform this repair on your own, please wear safety goggles, because there is a coil spring inside which almost poked out my eye. I fixed the stud with CA glue, but I'm quite sure that this will not last forever. We'll see. Let's take a closer look at the gear. More or less half of the teeth sheared off. I'm not 100% sure what material it is made out of. I put some acetone on it, which didn't do anything, so it's not ABS. I used AVE soldering iron test and found out that the tip is starting to touch the plastic at around 150 degrees Celsius or 300 degrees Fahrenheit. Unfortunately, I realized that I did not have any references to compare that with. Melting point? Glass transition temperature? If anyone can help me out with that, I would be really happy. I could imagine that the gear is made from PA since this material is commonly used for gears, but can't prove that in any way. Alright, since we have found the broken part, I'm going to walk you through the process how I designed the replacement in Fusion 360. Please excuse my English in the following part, but I did not record that with a script and as you might have already noticed, I'm not a native English speaker. So let's create our replacement gear in Fusion 360. So I will start step by step, I'll um, sketch the rough body at first, then we will create the teeth and add the details in the end. So at first we create um, the rough outline of the gear, um, I'll create a sketch on the XZ plane and just sketch a general L shape of our gear. Um, we already know that it shall be 60 millimeters high. It's um, good to have a rough dimension in the beginning, uh, but the rest of the dimensions I just sketch roughly and we will use the dimension tool now to um, get the proper dimensions. Um, so we want to have this flange right so I press D to go into the dimension tool. Um, I select these two lines and dimension to be five millimeters. Then I dimension the small diameter of the gear. This one shall be 9.7 millimeters. Notice how I create the um, diameter dimensions. I start by clicking the line which will be later our rotation axis and then I select the outer line by then right clicking and saying dim um, diameter dimension um, we will not dimension the length of this line right here but we will um, Fusion 360 will recognize that this is diameter and create a virtual point right here in this side. So this damage shall be 15.9 millimeters. And we'll sc stop sketching. All right, so we'll create our first body with the revolve tool. 
we'll select this surface right here as our profile. We will select this axis right here as our axis of rotation and hit OK. Then we will create the inner structure of the gear. Um, again, I create a sketch on the um, XZ plane um, and just roughly sketch out an L shape. Okay, there was something not working. Well, anyway, I hit D again and dimension the first diameter right here, which shall be three millimeters. And the lower hole shall be 5.4 millimeters. 5.4. This height right here, this height right here is 7.3 millimeters. Say step sketch again. Go to create, revolve, select this profile right here. Um, the axis of rotation is this one right here. And Fusion will already um, recognize on our own that this sketch was inside of an already existing part. So it will automatically select the cut operation. We hit OK. And we have also the inner structure. All right, so let's start with the first teeth right here on the um, on the smaller diameter. So we will sketch one tooth and then use um, a pattern operation to, um, well, just uh, get the teeth all around the diameter. I select the surface right here. I will just um, create a line right here um, and change it to a construction line. I will use this line later to create some symmetry, um, some symmetry constraints constraints for the tooth. Okay, um, anybody who is really familiar with how um, teeth of a gearing are usually designed will um, really want to scream at me because that's really not the proper way to do it. But for our application, it's totally fine. So I select the line. Uh, sketching tool and we'll just sketch roughly sketch the first tooth um, don't really worry about the shape right now we will close this line right here and we'll start with some symmetry constraints so I use symmetry to say okay this point and this point shall be symmetric around this line. This point and this point shall be symmetric around this line. And also this point and this point shall be symmetric around this line. So this looks already quite good. So just now continue with some constraints. Um, again, I'll create another construction line down here which I will be using to create um, a diameter dimension. Exactly, so we know that this dimension shall be 13.4 millimeters. This dimension shall be one millimeter the distance from this point to that point shall be 1.3 millimeters. Uh, let's move this a little bit back up here. Um, no, we don't want that. So I dimension this part. This shall be 1.2 millimeters. And the height is 0.9 millimeters. Okay, so now we have sketched our first tooth. I'll exit the sketch again and use the extrude tool to create the first tooth. Um, I'll change the operation to join because uh, we don't want this tooth right here to cut something out of the part. 
So hit OK again, and we already have our first tooth. So in order to get the 12 teeth um, around the diameter, we are using a pattern operation, um, a circular pattern, um, which we can use to do that. So the pattern type shall be feature because uh, we will use this extrude feature right here, which I select now. We will select an axis. So if I select the inner diameter in here, uh, Fusion will automatically recognize the, um, well, the center axis of the spore. And we want to have 12 teeth in total. So hit okay. And that doesn't really look so bad at the moment. All right, so let's continue with our second pair of teeth. So again, we will create a sketch. We'll create a sketch on the surface. And I hit OK. Okay, so we are actually almost set. So one of the last things I'll do, we'll create uh, we'll create the small groove right here on the upper side. Um, for this, I create a simple circle sketch on this surface right here. Select the center point. I just roughly sketch it with any diameter. And this one shall be 5.3 millimeters in diameter. Say stop sketch, modify, select the sketch, and it shall be 0.6 millimeters deep. Okay, so now we would actually be finished, but I'll just add some fillets to make it look a little bit nicer and to overcome some, some printing problems. So I select our chamfer tool and I select all the, the teeth right here around the circumference. So the chamfer we want is actually really tiny. I'll just put a dimension of 0.5 millimeters in here. And that really looks kind of nice. I think we are all set with that. So I almost forgot one quite important step. So let's take a look. Um, what we will do is, is a section analysis of our part. This uh, enables us to break the part more or less visually in half and take a look on the inside. So I select one of our origin planes. So I am actually planning to print this part in this position right here. And you see in this area right here that we have this overhang. I'm not a huge fan of support structure and especially in this area, uh, you will not get a nice surface, surface finish in the end and you might not even be able to get rid of uh, the support really easy. So what we will do, we will add a small chamfer in here and this will enable us to print this overhang this part right here is not actually critical for the function so it doesn't really matter if we add a chamfer at that location okay so just let's do this right now um i add a chamfer um i will select this line right here and now we need to see how big we can make it. I think 1.2 millimeters is fine. Yeah, exactly. So let's take another look on the inside. I activate the origin planes. I select one of the origin planes. And now you see that um, the whole part should be printable, printable uh, without any issues. Okay, so now I think we are finally finished. So the last thing we will do is right click on our part, save it as an STL. Um, 
the refinement being medium, that's totally fine for FDM printing. Hit OK. Save it under the name you desire. And we're all set. Since we have also broken the plugs which cover the screws, I drew them in CAD for replacing them as well. So the plugs are really easy in shape. Uh, they actually just consist out of out of one sketch, uh, as you can see right here. Uh, the sides are a little bit uh, at an angle uh, that makes it just easier for them um, to, to press fit them into their uh, later location. Um, I didn't make them cup shaped or hollow as the original ones are, just because we don't need that for FDM printing. Um, if you do injection molding, you want to have constant wall thicknesses all over the part. Um, so it would not be good for your injection molded part if it would have if it uh, would have this shape right here. And additionally, you would use um, just a higher amount of plastic. Um, I rotated the sketch. I used the revolve command for that. And then I just added uh, one chamfer on the lower side right here, uh, just that it looks a little bit nicer. And I additionally added a 30 degree angle chamfer on the upper side, which makes it easier to be inserted into the hole later. Now to the 3D printing part. Printing the gears in nylon would probably be the best idea. Unfortunately, I don't have any nylon filament at home. So there is PLA, ABS and PETG left. PETG would probably give us a good print quality with decent strength, but I had some issues with layer adhesion with the brand I'm using. And since the torque in this gear is transmitted through shear between the layers, it's probably not a good idea. ABS would give us medium strength and good ductility, but the print quality is usually not the best. PLA at last gives us the best print quality with the highest strength also between the layers. Unfortunately it's quite brittle and I don't know how it will handle the moisture. I printed the gears with 50% infill, 4 perimeters at a layer height of 0.15mm. I often see people printing their parts at 100% infill if they want to have a strong part. In 99% of the cases this is not necessary since the maximum stresses will be on the outside of your part. Increase the number of perimeters if you want a stronger part and don't work with any infill values of more than 50% if you don't have a good reason. Using 100% infill will only screw up the tolerances of your part, but it will only increase the strength slightly in most cases. So in the end I printed the gear with ABS with differing results and also in PLA. I decided to use the PLA gear as a first candidate and I'm quite excited how long it will hold up. If you are designing things on your own, don't get discouraged if they do not work and fit after your first print. This is, at least from my experience, barely the case. There will always be stuff which did not work out perfectly or you notice that you forgot something. The beauty with 3D printing is that it enables you to perform these design iterations very fast. This will make you a better designer and you will learn a lot about the capabilities and limitations of your 3D printer. So the gear fit and worked beautifully after putting everything back together. I'm quite excited to see how long my repair will last. You can find the STLs of both parts on Thingiverse and a link to the Fusion 360 files in the video's description. I hope you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up if you did. Dislike it if you think it sucked, but let me know what I can improve. Please consider subscribing, it helps and motivates me a lot. Auf Wiedersehen and I'll see you next time!